Well, it seems that Games Workshop, in their infinite wisdom, have chosen to give some powerful new buffs to the Skitari in their new veteran cohort formation. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the new buffs that Abmech have picked up in Warzone Charidon, The Book of Fire. I've said before that I think it was quite an annoying release really, it means that if you want the full rules for all Abmech options, then you need the Codex and both Charidon books now. The first one contained the Metallica supplement and the Defence cohort, both of which added a fair amount of interesting options and ways to play Admech, and in this one we get the Army of Renown, the Skitari veteran cohort. Where the Defence cohort was all about the Court Mechanicus, this one's all about the Skitari, which already happened to be one of the very strongest options in the whole game. I made a video a bit more than a week back talking about Admech tournament performance. Before their new codex dropped, they were already doing pretty well. And now it seems after it's dropped, they're doing absolutely great. They've got a ton of great options and buffing abilities, awesome firepower in their Iron Striders. And perhaps most relevantly for today, Skitari Rangers and Vanguard are already some of the most cost-effective troops in the game. For the 8 points that they cost, they put out some pretty ludicrous firepower. Rangers shooting just as hard as a Space Marine Intercessor when stationary. And Vanguard having a crazy stratagem that allows them to stack enormous amounts of wounds on literally any vehicle target. The optimal way to play them seems to be in Forge World Lucius, where people tend to teleport their Skitari into battle, and then proceed to pile absolutely tons of crazy durability options on them. Between the single character and the unit itself, you can get them to ignore AP-1 and AP-2. You can make them only ever wounded on 4s, which is pretty crazy for Toughness 3 infantry. They can take one of the Warlord traits to make themselves automatically in light cover every turn. Lucius gets a plus 1 save against any damage 1 weapons. And if their army happens to be in Bulwark Protocol, then they can also get a plus one save with that. It means that say if you're firing at them with a Bolter, the unit has an effective one plus save, though of course ones always fail. If you target them with anything heavier, wounding on a four plus is likely to ruin its efficiency, never mind the crazy high save they have as well. Between all this, these are some of the last units in 40k that really needed any sort of a buff, but they do seem to be the main beneficiaries of this army of renown. So what does the Skitari Veteran Cohort do for you then? Firstly, these armies of renown do often have fairly punishing restrictions, but this one really doesn't seem too bad at all. You can't use any Cult Mechanicus units, it's only Skitari units, aside from one of each Tech Priest, so you could have, say, one Manipulus and one Dominus if you wanted. The vast majority of Admet Compestive lists were already running almost entirely Skitari, so it's not really the biggest issue to be honest, it might mean that you're missing out on some Electro Priests if you wanted them but you can certainly get by fine with Skitari. Next, all the detachments must contain one Skitari Marshal, and one of them must be your Warlord. Again, really no big deal whatsoever, they're really cheap and effective buffing characters, and can get some really good relics and Warlord traits. Finally, all detachments must be from the same Forge world. Lucius or Mars seem like decent ways to go. Some lists might want to mix and match Forge worlds within the same army, but there's benefits and trade-offs to doing that. Basically, this is an army of renown that you really don't need to care too much about the restrictions, so it's kind of all buffs. As for the benefits that you receive, rangers and vanguard both become veteran rangers and vanguards. They're 10 points per model each rather than 8, but they do get some very nice benefits. You also gain access to a unique warlord trait, and more importantly, a very powerful unique relic. And then to further augment the Skitari, there's 4 unique extra stratagems that you can use if you need them. So first let's take a look at the veteran rangers and vanguard then. First of all, it's interesting that you must upgrade every unit to be like this, so it does mean that all your basic troops are going to be costing 10 points rather than 8 now. I think for the most part it could be quite helpful, but I'm not sure it'd always be optimal, as often you might want just a few small squads of holding objectives that you might not necessarily want to upgrade to veterans. The veteran rangers cost 10 points per model rather than 8, they get plus 1 attack and plus 1 leadership, Plus one attack is kind of handy, it makes them a little bit less weedy in combat, particularly if your opponent just tries to tag a big unit of 20 of them to lock them up for a turn, they'll at least have a fair few strength 3 attacks hitting back. They also have plus one leadership as well, again that's not totally irrelevant, particularly as they do tend to be fielded in sizeable numbers. Where the real value starts to get going though, is that they get their bionics enhanced, going from a 6 plus built in invault to a 5 plus. It's a pretty nice boost to be honest, it's just going to be another barrier against them dying to very high AP shots. As to be honest, between all their options, the Skatari troops deal with anything that's low AP fairly easily. Perhaps on top of that though, if they weren't survivable enough, 
every veteran ranger unit will automatically get light cover if they haven't moved in their previous movement phase. Now any sort of automatic cover is really handy, though I think it is going to be a bit of a trade-off really. Any turn not moving in 9th edition gives up better lines of sight and moving towards objectives, so it is a durability benefit that comes with a price. It really does incentivise rangers getting in the right position straight away, so they can hopefully stay still for a few turns, get full accuracy with their galvanic rifles, and also get this very nice plus one to save. 10 points per model with the firepower that they do, an automatic 3 plus save and a 5 plus invul, never mind all the extra buffs they get, does seem very scary. The veteran vanguard are also interesting though, again 10 points per model up from 8, they also get plus one attack and plus one leadership, and the plus one attack is perhaps even more relevant on them, as they make enemy units minus one strength and toughness with their rad saturation. That means at least against light infantry, they do have a reasonable chance of inflicting some hefty damage. A 20-man unit could in theory be a bit of a close combat threat against light infantry. If you charge in against, say, some guardsmen, you'd be killing around nine of them on average, and not being hit back very hard either, due to their minus one strength. They also get the five plus invul, really not bad for troops that are going to be advancing towards the enemy, and they'll be advancing even quicker if they choose to as well, as they can always advance 2d6 and drop the lowest. Usually that'll mean that you're going to be quite reliably going at least 3 inches or more. Finally, big units of 20 of them are further incentivized as well, as their skirmish protocols allow them to never count as more than 5 models whenever they're targeted by blast weapons. That just really hinders yet another way that you can efficiently pile damage on these big units, particularly with any big blast d6 weapons getting an automatic max shots against them. It won't be relevant against every army, but the ones that it is will really feel the difference. Overall, I do think that these rules are fairly strong, but I will bear in mind the extra couple of points increase, and I think that actually for the points it is a fairly reasonable trade-off. Sure, all these extra powerful things are quite good, but then so is having absolutely dirt cheap 8-point models that pile out tons of firepower. They're just a fair bit more expendable than these 10-point versions. Still though, it's a very powerful extra option to field these guys, and if it makes more sense for your army, then this is a potentially really powerful buff to both of these already strong units. On top of this though, they also have access to a crazily powerful relic and some really useful stratagems. The Warlord trait I'd say is kind of okay, it's called Calculate Without Diversion, and it basically reduces the cost of each one of these stratagems by one command point, provided you're in the appropriate Doctrina Imperative. Say for example, if you're in the Binaric Offense one, if you're in the Protector Doctrina, that costs you 2 CP rather than 3. I think realistically, it's only going to amount to 2 or 3 CP over the course of the game, and that's if you even choose to use these exact stratagems in that exact phase. And to be honest, I'd say it as a bit take or leave. Their relic, though, looks like an absolute auto-include, and it's called the Cantic Thralnet. This might be one of the single most powerful buffing relics in a codex that's absolutely overflowing with powerful relics and traits. It works quite similarly to the Skitari Warlord traits, you can either cast it on a unit that's within 9 inches, or any unit that has a data tether. You can use it on any core unit, so it includes things like Rust Stalkers and Iron Striders, not just these powerful veteran Skitari, and it basically grants them one extra Doctrina Imperative on top of any that are already active. What this really translates to is getting either plus one to hit, or plus one to your armor save for one unit of your choice each turn. It's both ridiculously powerful and ridiculously easy to use. You just literally have to have a marshal sat at the back somewhere, and beam this over the radio to the unit of your choice, one that you want to hit really hard, or one that you want to be really survivable. Theoretically, you could just use this really basically, maybe have a massive unit of iron striders at the back of the board, and now those iron striders will be hitting on twos literally all game long. A crazy extra buff to one of the strongest firepower units in the game. Alternatively, you could just choose one of your big Skitari blobs each turn, give them plus one to their saves, and make them just that little bit harder to remove. Between this and the trait that gives you automatic light cover, you could just automatically plonk one Skitari unit into having a 2 plus save versus shooting every single turn. It seems like a massive auto include to me, and a really big draw to running this formation as a whole. Finally, we have four stratagems, all of which are fairly powerful, maybe a little bit CP intensive, though you do have the potential to reduce it either with Holy Order traits, or that Calculate Without Diversion Warlord trait. First up is a really big 3 command point one called Binaric Offense, and this one is a flat murderous shooting buff, where you pick two core veteran cohort units, so it can be things like Iron Striders for example. Both of those units can only target one enemy unit, but both of your units get plus one to wound against the target. 
Again, this just combined with all of the mental buffs that Admech already get, is going to translate into some serious, serious damage. Maybe it could be best to use on units like Skitari Rangers, who have strength 4, so maybe struggle to wound a little bit. Or maybe even Mass Iron Striders with auto cannons. Strength 7 attacks with plus 1 to wound will really do a number on most things. It is pricey at 3 CP, so it's not the sort of thing that you'd use every turn. But if your opponent does have one enormous Death Star unit, and you want to just pile as much damage on it as possible for a turn, this could truly be game changing. Just say for example, if we had a couple of units of Iron Striders with auto cannons next to a marshal with the reroll ones to hit and wound relic, and you use this when you fire at a target, in theory your 400 points would do something like 20 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle all the way over at 48 inches. It is quite a powerful shooting option to have in the hand. Next up we have a nice simple aggression override one, 1 command point for plus 1 attack in melee. Again that can be used on any core unit, and it could mean that your veteran vanguard could be striking with 3 attacks each, so that's potentially 60 hits on a big unit, or that's an enemy with minus 1 toughness. Could be good for a surprise flurry of damage in the fight phase from standard Skitari, but would also help out units like Rust Stalkers, or maybe the Cerberus Raiders, if they did just want a small melee damage boost. Quite cheap, and quite nice to have reactively. Next we have Bionic Endurance, which is either 2 or 3 command points, 3 CP if it's a unit with 10 or more power. This one's a crazy reactive defensive buff that gives the unit a 5 plus feel no pain type save. So just in case your core Skitari blobs weren't already crazily durable enough, this can give you just one more barrier to layer on with all the rest to make sure that you're not losing any significant casualties. The vast majority of Skitari units have less than 10 power. The big 20 man rangers and vanguard blobs have power rating 8, so it's 2 CP for a 5 plus feel no pain on them. Could potentially be even more relevant on 2 wound units, things like big squads of Rust Stalkers, or maybe Cerberus Raiders. Finally, we have 1 or 2 command points in Expedited Purge Protocol. This one is an advance and charge stratagem, something that the Skitari didn't have access to, and you use it on a non-vehicle core unit that they can charge after advancing. It costs 1 command point on Rangers or Vanguard, and 2 CP on other units. Sometimes that could be a really powerful option, if it does make the difference between getting your very tough Skitari onto objectives or not. Potentially could be combined with Cerberus Raiders for 3 CP for a really, really long charge. They can get an auto 6 inches advance, so they could potentially move 18 inches, and then still charge after that. Again, probably not one to use every single turn, but one to remember that exists, as it might make the difference between whether or not you can score points. Overall, for the other buffs in the army... I'd say the Warlord trait is okay, the Relic is absolutely amazing and an auto include, and the Stratagems are literally all useful, though do come with their command point cost, which means that you will have to ration them against the other powerful options from Codex Admech. Having the extra options really doesn't hurt though, and in certain games I could see some of these being absolutely key. So overall, a rather unfortunate case of Games Workshop handing out some really powerful buffs to an army that arguably needed it least. Not really the best move, I must be honest. I strongly suspect that this formation was written at the same time as the Codex, perhaps before it had become clear just how much of a threat that they were to the competitive scene. In any case, I look forward to hearing what you have to say about the formation. Do you think it is really quite strong? Or maybe nothing particularly special compared with the already great stuff that Admech has? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly be looking to review the rest of Warzone Charidon Book of Fire, hopefully with some videos on our martyred lady and Bellacor in the near future. Finally, I'd just like to quickly mention that Allspets Tactics has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Making all these 40k videos does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few benefits, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits every month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.